today is the actual flying day. The acquired data will need to be corrected for atmospheric effects. And for that we will do reflectance measurements of some pre-selected bright and dark targets. Uh, we will do the measurements as closely as possible to the time of overflight. So we have to rush from one to the other uh, pre-selected target. The uh, measurements we will do uh, will be uh, used as input in an empirical line correction. The empirical line calibration method is an approach which uses field reflectance measurements from the study area to convert the image data from radiance to reflectance. Using the image radiance values and ground reflectance values for the target areas, we can derive a linear equation relating radiance to reflectance for each image band. In a plot of radiance versus reflectance, the slope of the calculated line quantifies the combined effects of the multiplicative radiance factors, the gain. The intercept with the radiance axis represents the additive component or offset. These values are then used to convert each image band to apparent reflectance. The final value should be considered apparent reflectance because the conversion does not account for possible effects of topography within the scene. Typically, a dark and a bright region in the image area are used for empirical line calibration. This provides a more accurate linear regression. Good calibration sites should be spatially homogeneous and spectrally featureless. A spectrally featureless area is one that does not have strong absorption features in the wavelength region measured. The site should be large enough so that multiple image pixels cover the site and be large enough to be recognized in the image, with a minimum of 3x3 three three pixels. The site should be at similar elevation to the prime study area. The reflectance of a ground calibration site can be characterized using a field portable spectrometer. This needs to be done at or near the time of data acquisition, so that the effects of sun angle and atmospheric absorption are fully represented in the field data and to avoid variations in the spectral behavior of the calibration site. It is therefore important that the calibration sites are easily accessible. Field spectra have artifacts due to constantly changing conditions. The best conditions in which to make field measurements are clear skies, near solar noon, at temperatures that do not stress the instrumentation, so no extreme heat or cold. Here I arrive at the target which was selected as a bright calibration site. It meets the requirements for a good target. It is easily accessible, it is large enough to cover multiple image pixels and as being a man-made structure it is easily recognizable in the image. When looking at close detail the target might not look very homogeneous. It can however be considered spatially uniform at image pixel scale. Before measuring the solar reflectance of the calibration site, I need to measure a reference panel. This reference panel is made of material that reflects nearly 100% of all incoming sunlight. Its reflective behavior is well understood and we can use the reference measurements to correct for variations in strength of sunlight and some atmospheric effects. The reflectance for each calibration target was measured using an ASD FieldSpec Pro. The spectrometer has about a 25 degree field of view, leaving a footprint of 40 centimeters in diameter when measuring from 1 meter height. Sufficient measurements should be made to adequately represent any variation in the target. Depending on the variation visible within the target, between 15 and 60 spectra were taken for each target. These spectra were averaged for comparison with the image pixel spectrum. 
Finally, the location of the calibration site was determined using a handheld GPS. Thank you.